these two amaze. All right, shut up. I love you! <laughs> so, uh, first of all, thank you guys for, for, for coming. Uh, each year we come here, we are astonished at the support that we get. And here we are in H Hall. Who knew? So, and it's all because of you guys, so I just want to point that out. Thank you so much. Uh, keep it up. Misha Collins. Bobby Singer himself, Jim Beaver. And a guy you shouldn't trust named Crowley, Mark Shepard. We got consulting producer Ben Edlin. Well, <laughs> welcome, guys. Uh, first of all, I know we're gonna have to keep, we're gonna keep a little mystery with that clip we just watched. But uh, Jensen, what's it been like now? You've uh, directed twice. What's it like putting on the director's shoes? <laughs> uh, it was it was more difficult the second time, uh, which was a little a little strange. I uh, thought you know I, I have more knowledge after doing it the first time, but I think last year a little bit of uh, it was it was more ignorance is bliss. Um, but it was uh, it was good. I, I I had to be in it more, which you'll see when you see the episode. I had to act a little bit more in this episode than I did last year, so uh, that proved to be a bit of a challenge. And, and also working with him is always a challenge, so... Um. <laughs> well, that leads to my next question. Uh, I asked some fans for questions on Twitter, and uh, Air Bat McFly, great name by the way, asked Jared, did you behave when he is the director? <laughs> 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 of course not. Uh, the least I can do for him is make his job... Let's hear some more screaming. <laughs> It smells like Robert Pattison up here. <laughs> Was he in my seat? Uh, no, I, uh, yeah, you know, I, I did. I think I, I think I behaved. I don't know. I tried not to, but maybe I did. He was good to me, so I figured I'd be good to him back. I mean, here, the, the, the one thing is that, uh, fortunately, I've, I've been around on this show a little bit. And, um, Once or twice. I, I, I know it, so he, you know, I, he trusted me to, to, to tell him where to go and, and, you know, what to say, when to say it. And other than that, I don't, I don't have to tell this guy how to be Sam. <laughs> you know, not to mention we've been watching each other's backs for six years now, and so... What? Not like that. Watch. Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Have a kiss. <laughs> um, it was an awful throw. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so there's, you know, as far as like performance-wise, he and I are always kind of looking out for each other, uh, whether, no matter who's directing. So I, I, I think that was fairly easy. Uh, I gotta ask now, uh, Misha. A lot of questions. <laughs> Castiel, I think they're screaming. No, don't ask him anything. Don't go back. <laughs> Castiel has been such a lovable character. What's been your reaction when you saw where they were going with him? What? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Written such a lovely thing. Um, what, what's my reaction? Yeah, what was your reaction when you saw where they wanted to take Castiel? Can you use smaller words for him, please? <laughs> yeah. I don't go past two syllables. Reaction. I don't. Um, well, I, to be perfectly honest with you, um, I, I, I have been sort of, as an actor, surprised that um, no one has written a god role for me yet in my career. <laughs> um, it just seemed like it's such a natural fit, and I think, um, I mean, obviously getting to know me, Sarah saw that and, and just sort of wove it into the story, because it, it kind of fit. Um, and uh, <laughs> you can't see what I can see, but it says, please be aware that members of your audience may be under 18 years of age. So I'm not going to say what I was about to say, but it was Aww. hilarious. <laughs> if they're in this panel, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Tone it down, folks. <laughs> um, but yeah, so anyway.
anyway, it's, to be perfectly honest, it's incredibly daunting. You, you know, normally when you get a, a role, you see, oh yeah, this guy, you know, he's, wow, he probably walks with a limp, or uh, in my case, he talks with a lisp usually. <laughs> and uh, and this time, it's like, wow, I don't know, how do you how do you play God? Obviously, I haven't figured that out, but it's uh, it's an interesting <laughs> challenge to work on. <laughs> uh, so Sarah, I got to ask. It's, it's it's a loaded question, but. How much might we see Castiel this season? What is his role in the season going in? Hmm. Well, Sarah, yeah. You guys don't really want to know how much you see me short. <laughs> well, Eric, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> um, you know, we've been getting this question pretty much every minute of every day. <laughs> People started to hear about the change in Castiel. And, um, you know, the, the reality of this is that we want to tell you everything we can tell you about Misha because we love Misha as much as you do. And we want to tell you everything we can about Castiel because we adore the character as you do. But, I mean, you saw the cliffhanger. It was very cliffhangery. So, <laughs> we want you to tune in and be anticipatory. And we can't say past what you know, which is that he's going to be in the first couple of episodes. Um, so watch those, and then bug us about it again, and we'll tell you a little more. <laughs> Stay tuned for Wow, that was really informative. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm not answering the question, but I'm explaining why we're not answering the question. Does that help a little? Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, Jim, Bobby has been sort of the, you know, always there. Tested a little when Sam tried to kill him last season. Um, where, where is he at now? Is, uh, has he come to terms? Is everything cool between these guys? Well, everything's cool between Bobby and Sam and Dean. Um, between Jim and Jared and Jen. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a very different question and one that I don't really want to get into right now. <laughs> You requested me should sit between you guys, right? I, I requested that everybody sit between us. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, you know, I think that I think that the difficulties that Bobby had, you know, like when Sam tried to kill him, uh, that the I think Bobby realizes that um, uh, in the world that we inhabit really, really bad things happen to people that are sometimes out of their control, and uh, that, uh, you know, Sam didn't mean it. <laughs> he takes it back. Yeah, he takes it back, so we're good. Okay. Uh, Mark, you know, Crowley, uh, he... <laughs> Give them another kiss. Uh, Crowley, uh, there's one of Hershey's kisses going on here. Uh, Crowley had a much bigger agenda than it seemed, and he thought he kind of had it all figured out, only to have Castiel kind of turn the tables on him. So what's what's going on with him now? Is he sort of licking his wounds, or is he just ready now to come back, and he's going to you know, get that guy for betraying him and get what he wants? I'm in season seven? <laughs> <laughs> Your DVDs and earlier stuff to catch up. Really? I'm in seven? Am I in seven? I'm in seven? Yes! So, what am I doing, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> well, without telling you too much. He's so good at this stuff. I can tell I you what say, you're not well, doing. Mark, what would you like to, like to see Crowley do next? Well, you see, I, I think I should give up on Supernatural altogether. I think the new spin-off half-hour sitcom called O oh Crowley. A little music, a little dance, a little salsa down your pants. You will see Crowley very early in the... He's being so disingenuous, he knows. I do? <laughs> See, this, is you great. come to Comic Con, she says, don't tell anybody anything. Don't throw me under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cass said he has big plans for him, so we're going to tell you what those are pretty much right from the jump. You know, it's, it's, been a lot, it's been an awful lot of fun to see what's happened thus far, and I'm really looking forward to see what happens this year. 
Uh, ben, you've uh, the, you're the show in general has gone into some amazing places with getting meta and sort of analyzing itself. And last season, the French mistake was sort of a genius version. Of but ha having done the French mistake, is there anywhere you can else you can go with meta? You know, at that right. point, like, are you trying to think what other angle can we take on this? Yeah, I think. Um, well, Oak Crowley is a good start. I mean, like. Uh, <laughs> I don't really know how much more we can do. I think that that's, this breaking of the fourth wall was a pretty profound one. But I think that, that we can, st I feel like there's lots of room to play with form. I think that the French mistake is meta, directly meta, and then we've done other things that are meta, like, I think Ghost Facers is meta in a sense because it, it plays with the form of, that we're in. So I think that we'll do more experiments like that, but I'm not sure what you can do to top the, You've used the actual actors' names. That's fatalist, Ben Edlund. What? That is fatalist. Uh, I know. No, Let's no. top it. All right, we will. I mean, I've been talking a lot about spaceships. I think we should go on a spaceship <laughs> for one episode. I'm serious, but we'll get down to that later on. Sarah, I'll talk to you about that later. <laughs> my, my first reaction when I heard the anime was going to exist was, you have a new angle. There's something you can do with the anime now. No, I think that, you know, that's yeah. cool, too. This just... I think we're still dedicated to playing crazy games with this box of toys that we've been given. Um, but uh, as far as the direct meta break, we're gonna have to work on that. That's a good. That's a good hard nut to crack. Thanks for asking. Uh, you know, Jared, you took Sam to some very dark places last season. Uh, we we've seen some glimpses of what went on in that sort of missing year. Do you think that there, have they hinted at you that there's even more? Are there even more horrible things he was involved in? Uh, well, without saying too much, uh, no, um, yes, 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 thank you. Um, yes, there's obviously more, um, I kind of touched on that earlier in a few interviews, but um, there's a lot that, that Sam has seen that now he can see again, now that the wall has fallen, and I, for my part, am really excited about kind of playing Sam that doesn't really know which reality he's in, you know, because Sam is obviously, <clears throat> for those who haven't watched the show, Sam had some hard times last season. <laughs> yeah, and um, and now we get to play with, with Sam's healing, and I think the, the Winchester brothers have always kind of, um, they've always uh, reacted to things with courage and bravery and, and been strong about it, and, and what excited me so far in the scripts that I've read is that Sam <clears throat> is, is, is way out of his league. He feels out of his league a little bit. It's kind of scary. So I actually read it and I was getting chills. Um, and I was scared. I was really excited about making this show scary again. Um, and we get to see what, you know, what can scare the Winchester boys. So we get to play with that. So I'm excited. And uh, Jensen, they don't keep... Misha shirtless scares the Winchester boys. <laughs> I think you're confusing fear with jealousy. Uh, Jensen, things weren't actually, you know, very uh, happy for your character at the end of the last season either. Uh, you know, obviously you have a, a very big problem to deal with right now, which is an angel calling himself God. But how much is weighing on your character what he just had to sacrifice and what he had to sort of leave behind going forward? Um. Well, I, I think the, the, the goodbye to, to Ben and Lisa, um, you know, tough as it, as it was on Dean, I think it was a, a, a necessity, you know, he, he comes to the realization that that's, that's never going to be his life, uh, no matter how much he dreams about it, no matter how much he, he would, would love it to be, so he, he's a hunter, he'll always be a hunter, and that's, that's just the way it's going to be. So I think that that was, um, that was uh, a must, and uh, and it and it happened, and uh, it was a it was a tough scene to, to shoot. Just you know, for Dean, I, or for me as Dean, it was a uh, it was a, a sad goodbye. But um, you know, now we've got a now we've got a, a bigger problem on our hands. Yeah. <laughs> well, that leads me to a question. I was going to ask this question, but uh, someone on Twitter also asked it. AJ Snow seventy six. You got a character saying, "I am God." I think part of um, you know. Uh, cast stepping up and taking this sort of mantle on and saying I'm the new God is that he has always felt really strongly that his father abandoned them all like where is God when you need him we had this storyline about him looking for God and God never showed up he did the whole go out for cigarettes and never come back thing <laughs> so um, that's, a, that's always been a big deal for him so one of the questions we asked ourselves was um, 
Well, you're God, what do you do? You're God, you know, you get to be your dad. You thought your dad did a crappy job. What are you gonna do differently? And before everything goes completely to hell for him, which of course it does, because it's television, <laughs> um, you know, he gets, to, he gets to do what we think God would maybe do if Cass were God. So that's been fun. Misha, what's it been like for you uh, preparing to uh, you know, take on your, your godly mantle? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's <laughs> like I said, it's just I, it's like I, a I, I'm another taking, day in uh, the office. Yeah, I'm taking a lot, lot from my personal life and, and leaving it into character. Getting him to take it off is the hard part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, very method, so I, I, I've been smiting. I've been smiting it took him seven, far eight, more than eight. usual <laughs> up in Vancouver. You might have seen it on the news. Uh, yeah, no, I, 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 I don't know what to say. It's, it's definitely a daunting challenge. Um, it's, it's funny. It's one of those things that actually I, I, I got kind of nervous about it. Like, ah, this is a big, under, it's a big challenge. I mean, you had to be Satan. It's kind of a, right? Yes. <laughs> gotta take, That's much. <laughs> I've got to take a page from you. That's the way to answer questions. Um, I think that everybody on Supernatural at some point or another has an opportunity to play a very interesting, very um, epic, mythological character. And it's uh, something that I, I, we don't get to do you know, on, Working on other shows, um, it's it's an unusual treat to get to do and and uh, and an unusual challenge. Uh, speaking of, you know, almost earnest. No, it was yeah. That was, was heartfelt. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Misha Collins. <laughs> this show because the characters get to change and transform so much. I'm trying to think. I think every single one of you have had a death scene. I'm pretty sure. Uh, uh, a a death scene? One? Yeah, yeah, or multiple. Uh, uh. <laughs> Like six times? Have you, have you all uh, enjoyed A, getting to do your big death scene, and then B, getting told, and, and you're okay, don't worry, you know, you're serious. I died like 40 times in one episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I died again. <laughs> Sarah, do you make a lot of uh, phone calls saying, uh, don't worry, when you read that page of the script, you get better? Is that like a constant thing? We, we actually do make a lot of phone calls to actors, recurring actors on the show. You know, it's a, a polite and good thing to do as a producer <laughs> to call an actor when they're going to get pages that say they die. Um, and one of the things we say is that death doesn't mean the same thing on Supernatural that it means on other shows. Um, you know, like Glee. Alone is called... Was that out loud? <laughs> well, we've, so we've made that call to a lot of actors. <laughs> Jared and Jensen don't worry about it, but every everyone, you know, no one is safe on the show. But uh, Jared and Jensen don't worry about it? You know how many times Jensen has cried in my arms? <laughs> You're not going to die, Jensen. You're not going to die. That's it's so okay. Sweet. We can't do it without you. <laughs> <laughs> guys, uh, we're going to start taking uh, questions from you guys. Just a few minutes to get those prepared. <laughs> 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 it's not personal. You know, the, uh, the fans, it's, it's you know, Conflict is good drama, and then of course, though, some of the fans are like, why do Sam and Dean have to be fighting you know, all the time? <laughs> for you guys, though, you know, is it is it fun for you? You know, you get along in real life to be like, all right, right now we're, you know, we're at odds. We get to uh, hate each other for the day. <laughs> I think the I think the brother bickering is is always been, um, you know, a part of the show that, that, that he and I have, have just kind of done, uh, you know, pretty easily. It's when, like last year when uh, when Sola Sam was was around, um, and he wasn't playing Sam, that was that was a real kind of challenge I think for for uh, for me as an actor because it wasn't it wasn't Sam I, I wasn't able to play Dean with Sam like I had been for the past five seasons so I think that was that was definitely a challenge but the uh, no we have no problem fighting with each other. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously though, I, that that is one of my favorite parts. The the brothers bickering, the brothers fighting. I felt like it's a like I can remember certain times. I don't know what the episode was or what it's called, but I remember we shot one scene. I want to say either Bob or Kim directed it, season one or two, or we're fighting like in a motel room, like snap out of it. And I feel like after each and every one of those scenes, I feel like Sam grew. Um, 
kind of by accident, in spite of himself, as opposed to, or in spite of myself. Um, and so I enjoy those scenes because inevitably something, when you've worked with somebody for so long as an actor and know them so well as a human being, um, you're able to get more out of each other. You know, if a guest star comes on, no matter how talented they are, and they're often very talented, um, they can't quite pull out of you what somebody that you know. It's like you always hurt the ones you love, you know? Like someone, you always hurt them the most, and they always hurt you the most. The better you know somebody, the more you can push their buttons, and the more your buttons can be pushed. And so I feel like, as Jared, I feel like my character grows when I have these intense scenes with Jensen. Um, and that was difficult for me too to do soulless because there'd be parts where I was kind of just, I assume dead eyed. I don't know what I looked like, but I was trying to do dead eyes. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and then I felt so bad because I couldn't react and respond to Jensen, the Dean. Um, but um, now we get to fight again. <laughs> that wasn't really, I was hoping for like a climax at the end of the question, like, ah! All I get is now we get to fight again, so bear with me. Uh, Jim, uh, not, not that any of these characters are lucky in love, but uh, you know, last season it was pretty sad when we got that glimpse of uh, another life for your character. You know, do you ever say, uh... You know, always a bride, oh, never a bridesmaid, something like that. Always a bride, never a bride. <laughs> I think you... No, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you talked to uh, have you talked to oh, Ben and Sarah and, uh, <laughs> and said, hey, can, can this guy finally uh, finally uh, find some long term happiness? Didn't you kiss Mark? Yeah. 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 Maybe the two of you. Yeah. Did he shave? Were you clean shaven? <laughs> we're not. Looking it was like a what we're doing. It was like a mustache fight. Certainly, <laughs> <laughs> I've got a beard. <laughs> um, you know the it. It, it comes up in discussion every once in a while, and, and uh, thus far hasn't ended well. Um, uh, I, I have this sneaking suspicion that, um, um, I don't know, that we haven't seen the last of Sheriff Mills uh, in, in Bobby's life in one way or another, but that's just a sneaking suspicion, um, and it's one I would fully support if it around to that <laughs> because uh, unlike the Sheriff Mills that I played on Harper's Island this Sheriff Mills is hot <laughs> so uh, I'm up for that uh, before, so we start, before we start the audience questions are there any characters you can talk about because your show is great at bringing people back people back from years ago you might not even be thinking about any plans for some characters to return oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah Joe is coming back actually. <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> really? We, we find out when you find out, isn't that great? Yeah! We actually found out after, because the sound echoed and hit us through applause. <laughs> we, uh, I mean, that's a perfect example of someone who dies on the show, and we're literally sitting in the editing room watching dailies and going, I can't wait to bring her back. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just been waiting for the right story for her, and um, we have one, so we're bringing her back. Um, Woo! Woo! Sheriff Mills is returning. Yeah! <laughs> An episode or two, Woo! and um, at least. And um, uh, who who else is coming back? This <laughs> um, <laughs> gentleman down there waving his hand. You with have, beard. We do have plans for Crowley to return. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, death. <laughs> you will see death again. Woo! Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, and we have a few more in the works. Uh, I'm a little superstitious about uh, talking about them before the deals close. Call me crazy. But, um, yeah, and, and you'll meet new guys, too. And um, there'll be laughter, there'll be tears. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's, let's start with some audience Ready? questions. Can't quite see you, but we know you're out there. Quiet down. Quiet down. Good question. Quiet down. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> professional forum. Hello there. <laughs> Hi. My name is Isaiah. I'm really amazed to see you all. I'm a mad fan. And I'd like to know, honestly, watching you as actors, you have facial expressions, gesturing, that is very similar to grammatical structures of American Sign Language. Have you considered con using those uh, skills as sign language components in some of your scenes? <laughs> oh, wow. Ben, the sign language episode sounds totally up your That alley. sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that, 
What? What? <laughs> um, how will we? How are you guys going to incorporate more sign language into your performance? I, I think that's, that's a cool that's, idea. Yeah, I, we they could run two stories at once. Yeah, you could. You could have one be completely wrong. What do you think, man? <laughs> that's pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. I think that uh, I think that, that I don't, Ben and Sarah might disagree with me, but um, yeah. I think that you can say a lot without saying words. And so, thank you for. Um, picking up on that, because uh, I think that's something that uh, a lot of us uh, pride ourselves in, in bringing to our characters, the things that we say between the lines, so, um, yeah, that's, uh, it wouldn't it be great if we didn't have to say words at all? <laughs> at this point, too, with you two, we have five or six, it's like the 29 words for snow, we have so many different ways of saying that you two exchange a look. <laughs> we could just write a scene of the different looks you two exchange. We probably could. Yeah. yeah, we would have like you could probably cut together an entire episode of just <laughs> Sam looking at Dean He's and Dean looking on. back. Yeah. Yeah. I, I believe I've seen that on YouTube, Jensen. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it is. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Aww. It'll be okay. <laughs> I'm Jared. Hello. <laughs> we love you guys and we're like the biggest fans and we just love all you guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Even Misha? Yeah. 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 Misha, Jensen. Not in that order. <laughs> and our question is for Jensen. We're wondering oh, what on. similarities you have with your character. What similarities I have? Um, I don't, I don't, not... Physique. <laughs> Physique. The same hair. <laughs> Looks. Uh, height. Definitely height. I, yeah, similar height. Uh, you know, I would say that uh, it, you look back to maybe season one, and there were probably a lot more characteristics that we shared. Um, I think over the years, Dean has kind of evolved into a, a much more specific character that I am not. Um, so, uh, you know, similarities. We like the same kind of music. Uh, we, uh, we, we, like, uh, we like vintage cars. Uh, and that's about it. They both air guitar all the time, whenever I the Tiger comes on. Yeah. yeah, and neither one of us can, can stop ourselves when Survivor plays, apparently. So that's... Uh, no, I, I, that's that's about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, um, my question is for Misha. Now, I'm just wondering if being the Antichrist has helped you, like, and maybe influence you on being Godcast. Wait, wait, can you repeat the question? Yeah. <laughs> has um, since you're the Antichrist and all that, has that like influenced you how you play Cass as God? Yeah. <laughs> Are you asking if he's actually the Antichrist? <laughs> In person or as a I'm not sure I like this question. <laughs> you get a variety of answers from us. Well, yeah, since I'm a Satanist, um, <laughs> research that does, yeah, inform uh, how I play the character. <laughs> and and, and well, every time you ask the question just now, um, Jared was saying something in my <laughs> so that I, it's hard to actually process two things at once. I'm finding. Um, <laughs> So I don't. You don't. Know I still don't know what the question was. What is the question? Um, on your Twitter, like, there's this really weird church group that said you were the Antichrist. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I don't know how they figured that out. Because <laughs> I was trying to keep it totally under wraps, but I obviously oh, slipped well. up a couple of times and uh, cats out of the bag. So. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I've just got to embrace it now. <laughs> I think you should smite them. Yeah. Thank you. Actually, that's kind of ironic. You'll you you'll uh, understand why when you see the the first episode of the season. <laughs> Church. Next question, please. Hello, uh, my name is Caroline, and just to make this clear, I came a long way for the show. I camped out, so. Wait, you rich? Very good. I come from Guadalajara, so... Really? Yes. Is it an organ? No, it's not. <laughs> but it's also Mexican. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, so my question is for Jensen and Jared. 
Okay, I saw you five. I saw you guys five years ago in Los Angeles when you were doing the first season, halfway through. And I remember you guys said, well, the producer said that there was only going to be five seasons. After that, you guys finished with the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> so, what were your thoughts when you found out that the show was going to go on? Honestly, <laughs> I'll let you later. <laughs> You go first. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, you know, I, I was uh, I was surprised and and also proud uh, at the fact that uh, Mr. Kripke kept to his word and and wrote those wrote those five years uh, the, the the way he had planned and and the fact that he had a plan for five season seasons still boggles my mind because I, I you know. After writing a pilot, I wouldn't know where to go from there. So um, the fact that he had five years lined up and that he kept to it, that he just didn't stretch those five years into six or seven or eight or nine or however long we're going to go, that he kept to it, I, that I thought was was really um, uh, really cool. And um, because the story of these two brothers just continues to evolve, it I, I think the the stories are kind of endless. So um, you know we've got. Uh, I have faith in these guys, and and um, as, as long as they keep kicking out stories, we'll we'll keep telling them. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that uh, Jared's right here too. I love you too. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah, just uh, just to follow up on that, you know, do you guys have other have you had further discussions, you know, about when it might end, or you just right now you've got a lot of stories to tell, and you can take it year by year. <laughs> but we hope it goes on for a long time. Woo! I, you know, Eric did create kind of a perfect franchise to keep going, and we have fresh blood in the room this year, and it's kind of amazing how much fresh energy there is. So we have a plan in place if this is the last year, and we have a firm plan in place if it isn't. Next question, please. That'll be up to you guys. We have time for one more question. Hey, this is a question for Ben. Um, We're good. You know, every time they open the trunk, they have this like arsenal in there of like all these incredibly cool things. And like specifically, every time I see those ninja stars, I'm like, oh my god, there are ninja stars. I know they one of those so bad. <laughs> so, so that is a grenade launcher. Yes. Why? Why can't we use the grenade launcher and the ninja stars? <laughs> that is my question. Why are they not using the ninja stars? Oh, the, the heavy ordnance. When will we start blowing things up with the weapons yeah. in their trunk? Well, that, I, I love the ninja stars, but you could do the ordnance too, you know, whatever you want. But please do it, because Ben be just fantastic. pitched a ninja story. He's like, yeah. I just want to make them ninjas. I think that we should fight the ninjas. Yeah. Well, you think that they should fight the ninjas also. Uh, so you're asking when will we like flesh use more of these crazy weapons in various stories? I think if we use things like grenade launchers, then the stories tend to end about two acts early because everything just blows up and then we're done. So we the Department of Homeland Security. <laughs> oh, the starships. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe ninja, star maybe ninja stars. That's that's what we can use against the Jefferson stars. What we should do is just to see if you guys like practicing with the ninja stars. I don't know if you've ever thrown ninja stars. I used to do it a lot, and they just they fly all over the place. I'd like to see you guys try to learn. Maybe you're great at them. I'm not sure. Well, I remember when you guys wrote that Dean was throwing knives in one episode a couple of seasons ago, and um, my trailer looked like Swiss cheese by the end. <laughs> I, I kid you not, they set up like a board and I just started chucking knives in my trailer. And I was aimed didn't start out very well. I wasn't really good at first. <laughs> That's hard. Throwing knives are tough. So, yeah, yeah. So, we'll maybe do some shurikens. That's, I think, the official name for the. the... Also, it turns out ninjas did not use those, historically speaking. Now I'm just using history to bring everyone down. <laughs> So guys, we uh, have to wrap it up there with, with fan questions. we have one more? One more here? Oh no, we just have an amazing costume though. Yeah! Oh, <laughs> yeah! Aww. Send her up here! <laughs> That's a much cuter angel than the one we deal with. Come on up, you 
winged trench coat. Uh, you're getting a very special present there. We got some um, We got some special stuff to show you. Uh, just a brief, as a brief intro, Supernatural the anime, how does that even exist? I can't think of any other modern American TV show where there's an anime version made at the same time. Apparently we're big in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we have seen it, and it blows our minds. Um, we, we, you know, the first I saw of it was Eric called me into his office and said, you're not going to believe this, you have to see this. And it was the concept drawings, and I thought they were genius. Um, the, the Japanese um, creative team have leave to do their own thing with it, and I think have been really cool and respectful and creative and have given their own spin to the series. And Jared and Jensen have given their voices to at least some of the episodes, I think. How many? Um, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I did them, I did them all. Yeah. <laughs> what, was, what, was, what was that like for you guys to, uh, to get to, not, you don't have to worry about any hair or makeup, you just get to go in and uh, record the voices? <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? Well, unfortunately, we um, they came to us when when I was also playing like three Sams, and so I was playing uh, um, Hell Sam as he was called in the script, and Solus Sam, and Sam Sam, and then going to the make. I'm sorry, they, uh, Sam Sam, Sam, Sam. <laughs> and then going to the sound truck and playing like season one Sam. <laughs> So I was like, Sam, you better blah, blah. And then run to the trailer and like, I want to go back to law school. <laughs> it was definitely, a, uh, it was definitely a, a juggling act for a little bit there, but I think it looks great. I don't know if everybody's seen it, but it's scary. Part of them are pretty scary. Well, guys, you're about to see a glimpse of it, but want to thank all these guys. For